together this morning. Uh, I'm going to start off with a few announcements, and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll have a, a, a video regarding our upcoming uh, bishop election, and uh, talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But uh, <clears throat> we'll start off with the uh, with the announcements. Just some things I'd like to highlight. Uh, condolences to Paulantina Friesen on the recent passing of their brother-in-law, Henry Clausen. So uh, he was the husband of he was the husband of Ovina Hebert, uh, Ovina Hebert Clausen, and he passed away on March 28th. So uh, let's remember to pray for Ovina as well as the uh, uh, Paulantina. So uh, also just a reminder for prayer uh, that we pray for one another as we continue on our faith journey. And, uh, and also just a few things that coming up this week, the Good Friday communion service at 11 o'clock, Sunday the Easter service at 11 o'clock, and I'd also like to just uh, have you mark on your calendars that April 14th and 15th is the, uh, the CMC delegate meeting, and that'll be in Gruntal on, on Saturday. But the Friday night is a, is a worship and praise time, so at, also at the Gruntal Church, please note of that. So uh, before we go to the scripture reading and prayer, I'm just going to ask uh, for the video to be played regarding the bishop election. Then on April the 16th or the 23rd, you, the CMC members, will elect the next bishop. So let's meet the candidates. So tell us your name, which church you've been pastoring, and how long. My name is Stan Friesen, and I've been in Stanley for 20 years. My name is Clinton Friesen, and I'm at Stanley CMC as well, and I've been there, uh, I guess, about eight years. My name is Davey Martins. I've been at Christian Faith Church for approximately nine years. Tell us about your family, your wife and children. Um, my wife, Annie, and we have five children, uh, Haley, Layla, Eli, Ezra, and Jackson. Yeah, so I also have uh, five children. Uh, my oldest is Kaya, she's 16, and then we've got boy and girl twins that are uh, going to be turning 14 this summer. Uh, got another daughter she's nine and our last daughter is seven my wife uh, Rolanda um, and we've been married well in April it'll be 19 years and uh, she's a nurse uh, in the hospital uh, I'm married to Sheila for the last uh, 23 years so we have uh, three boys Owen Reese and Ken and what kind of work have you done outside of Christian ministry uh, I've been construction uh, at one end of the street and then other end of the street, so the concrete truck delivering and catching delivering concrete, and then finishing, uh, placing finishing concrete, and then building houses. Yeah, I really have spent most of my time uh, working for uh, the CMC since uh, becoming an adult, but uh, prior to working for the CMC, uh, I worked at uh, Academy of Learning, just a uh, small trade school, and worked with computers and uh, teaching computer skills. I've been all over the place, uh, mostly customer service and Plumbing outfits, um, construction. Um, I've also been a thrift store manager for seven years. And uh, now I, since January 1st, I've been the senior pastor at the Christian Faith Church. And tell us about your education for Christian ministry. Uh, mostly experience. Um, haven't done a lot. I've taken some courses here with you and things at SBC, but uh, nothing, nothing major. Yeah, I, I uh, finished my bachelor's at Steinmuth Bible College uh, in 2014, and then I took a, a master's uh, in theology, and I finished that in 2016. I uh, 
graduated high school in 1998, and I did a one year formal uh, laboratory education, and then uh, a lot of other courses, uh, SBC, and uh, seminary. So that's what I did. What other ministries have you been involved with in the church and outside of the church? I began teaching Sunday school way back when. I've led uh, college and career, uh, young marrieds, uh, and those kind of things. Um, became a pastor uh, way back in 2003. Um, outside the church, I'm involved in uh, SAMA, Stam Missionary Ministerial Association. With that, I've also got involved with some chaplaincy uh, responsibilities and also worship in the city where we organize uh, a worship service for our community. Really been some good opportunities in my community. Yeah, so inside of the church, uh, Dave told me I should just say uh, I've done everything but be a deacon. Uh, I've been involved in uh, mission boards, uh, teaching Sunday school, um, you know, uh, been pastoring at the church uh, for the last number of years. I enjoy uh, playing guitar, and so I've been involved in praise and worship teams and things like that as well. Um, so I've been involved in the church uh, for some time and, and outside of the church, um, things like Rose River Bible Camp, uh, that's been a blessing to me. Uh, I served there when I was a teenager for a couple of years uh, and now my wife and I um, go and, and serve usually, I try and do a couple weeks a year and I speak and, and she's the camp nurse for, for those weeks. And also in the community, I've uh, coached some hockey and also baseball and that's always a blessing to me as well. Hi. Uh. I started out at, uh, at the Bunker Youth Ministries. That was my first ministry opportunity. And from there, I, uh, well, Corny Martins actually asked me to be the youth leader. And I was the first youth leader at Christian Faith Church, so that was, that was uh, exciting. And uh, we moved to Two Hills, and uh, we were there for two years, and then I started a youth group there, and that was good. Good ministry opportunity there. And uh, from there, we got called back to be pastor here, and so I became an associate pastor for uh, most of that time uh, in between. And what other roles have you had in the CMC conference? I am currently on the radio board, and I really enjoy that, that role. Uh, it's, it's a challenging role, and it's an exciting role as, uh, as it moves forward. Um, I'm also on the examination committee, and I find that intriguing to discuss the current issues and the Examining, yeah. I was talking to different pastors and deacons coming up. And so if I could, I would also point out that Davey's also served as a missionary uh, with with the CMC. Oh. No other thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I guess that was two hills. Yeah, that was a, a very interesting experience and a very growing experience. Yeah, so for myself, um, as I mentioned before, I've worked for the conference for a long time. So it started, I'm not sure which year it started, but I worked as uh, the office administrator for the conference for four years. And then we went on uh, missions to Papua New Guinea uh, for two years uh, with New Tribes Canada, but we were supported by uh, the CMC during that time. And then it came back and I've been uh, the executive secretary for the conference since uh, 2014. And so with that, I've been involved with the mission board and the radio board and publications and just kind of filling in uh, where I'm needed, I guess. I'm uh, currently on the, the youth committee. Been there for, I think it's since 2008, so I'm uh, the old guy on, on the team. Um, I've been the assistant bishop for the last 10 years, and that means I've also been on the bishop advisory committee and also the examination committee, which uh, has been uh, which has been a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, so that's, there's a few other committees. I think conference picnic, that's been fun. So that's, uh, I think that's more recent. So what is the part of ministry that you look forward to or you get excited about? Something that stirs your passion? I enjoy discipleship. I enjoy seeing young men and women who want to serve. They're already indicating that by getting baptized, membership, those kind of things. And then seeing their strengths and being able to equip them and enable them open some doors of opportunity. And my role as pastor in the church I get to, I, I get that front row seat to opening those doors, which is fantastic, and then just watching them thrive in those opportunities, which is, uh, which is great. So that, uh, that's one of the things I enjoy doing. Yeah, I would say I like uh, teaching and preaching in particular, um, whether that's 
you know, to larger groups or smaller groups uh, in person, but I like uh, being able to look people in the eye and see that they're catching on and, and uh, responding to it with faith, responding to God with faith. I think I had a lot of big questions at different periods of time, and I was glad that there was people around that helped me with those, and so I, I want to be a person that can help with some of those uh, big questions that people have as well and be able to point them uh, back to Jesus, so that's exciting for me. Uh, uh, ditto what Stan said. <laughs> No, it, it, uh, very much very similar to what Stan said. I, I get excited when young men and young women stand up and say they want to follow Jesus and to see them start serving in the church. It's exciting stuff. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy baptizing people. Um, that's, that's to me a great pleasure that I, that's, yeah, and communion. Uh, it's very humbling to serve communion to our people at Christian Faith Church. And, um, there's, there's an awe that's in me every time we have communion. So that's something that excites me. And any other interesting thing that you should know about me? Oh boy, uh, I dabble in woodwork, and I but I am not a good woodworker, <laughs> but I enjoy it. So um, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with two dogs. Um, <laughs> I, I sometimes have said, if you really want to get me going, then you talk about uh, faith, family, or uh, or sports, particularly hockey, but not necessarily in that order. And uh, so, yeah, I'm a big uh, hockey fan, big Vancouver Canuck fan, uh, long-suffering fan. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's something about me. I enjoy uh, sports. Uh, often, I uh, was playing tennis with friends and basketball with my boys. So those kind of uh, baseball, I'm a big baseball team here in Phoenix, and I, I enjoy those. I, I do make a pretty mean mouse to cookie. <laughs> Please be in prayer for the CMC conference and for the candidates and their families as we follow through this process. May the name of Christ be exalted, may the church be strengthened, and may the troubled world around us hear the hope that is in the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. Right, so that's uh, that's our process. After Dave announced that uh, that he was moving on to SPC to take up the uh, the role as SPC president, uh, continuing to uh, raise up leaders for the church, uh, we began this process. And uh, the video uh, introduction of the candidates. This is a first, and uh, and so we we, we thought we would uh, like it so that you can actually hear them respond and uh, uh, the, the process also was that we we had nominated these three at our conference ministerial meeting uh, this last week and so these are the ones that are that are uh, for you to pray for each one and the families they represent because even in the waiting process though only one will be elected all three have submitted themselves to the process so please pray for for each of the the men as well as their their wives and families as they as they wait uh, for this the vote will be done uh, April 16th and 23rd here after the service we'll have ballots available and so please do remember to pray for them uh, as I'm reading from uh, Psalm 118 I'd like to call the ushers forward Psalm 18 is is a, a psalm that uh, that is uh, quoted as Jesus is entering Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and uh, the people are shouting praises and I'd just like to read uh, Psalm 118 verses uh, 19 to 29. <clears throat> Open the gates of righteousness to me. I will enter through them. I will give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and you will become, you have become my salvation. A stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This came about from the Lord. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please, O Lord, do save us. Please, O Lord, do send prosperity. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. 
The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festival sacrifice to the horns of the altar with cords. You are my God, and I will give, you, give thanks to you. You are my God, I exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is everlasting. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you and praise you for being our God. We thank you, Lord, that, that you uh, came to uh, redeem us as we celebrate the, during this Easter season. Lord, you followed through. You came to redeem us. You, you paid the penalty on the cross, and we are going to be celebrating that uh, victory next Sunday, well, as we do every Sunday, but uh, next Sunday in particular. And so we pray that you would bless uh, this church family and, and that your name would be exalted. Uh, Heavenly Father, as we continue to work in the church, Lord, we continue to ask you to build your church. And even as we uh, look for new leaders and a, and a new conference leader, uh, we pray that you would uh, guide the, uh, the, the election process uh, to, uh, to the person that you would have serve in this capacity. Bless and, and uh, each of the men and families that are uh, represented in this uh, nomination process, and uh, may you be honored and glorified. Heavenly Father, we want to pray for uh, uh, Paulantina, uh, for Ovina Clausen as well, as they grieve the loss of, of their loved one. Uh, bless that family, Lord, as they, as they continue to find their comfort in you as well. Uh, thank you for uh, being with us here today, and even as we continue in the mission theme, uh, the, the group coming up, uh, Lord, we just pray that you would bless them as well. In Jesus' name, amen. So at this time, we're going to be having our regular offering, and uh, because this is a mission-themed day as well, we will be having a second offering after uh, uh, the, the service, and, uh, and so uh, uh, Candace will be, uh, will be uh, calling the ushers at that time as well. Thank you. Good morning, church. It's good to be here with you all. Uh, we're going to worship God together in song this morning. I'll invite you to stand. And we'll start with Here I Am to Worship. See my sin upon that cross. 
to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Psalm 34, verses 1 to 3 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. So let's continue doing that. We're going to sing, How Great is Our God. The 
morning, church. Uh, hopefully you have all received our newsletter in your mailbox, along with our new prayer card. For anyone who have missed it, Candace and I will be transitioning to a new mission agency. We have transitioned from Africa Inland Mission to MSC Canada. Africa Inland Mission will always hold a special place in our hearts. They sent us, trained us, and encouraged us. The organization we are now serving with, MSC Canada, exists to engage and enable each generation to impact the world for Christ through local, church-driven missions. They are also committed to God's supply. They believe that mission workers are called to ministry, not fundraising. 100% of our donations go directly to us, and with that, more opportunity to reach newcomers. We are excited for this next step of our journey and are looking forward to continue serving with Naomi House. The ministry we are involved in stays the same, Nothing changes in our day-to-day -day ministry, just the sending organization changes. Uh, we have some extra prayer cards in the back. Uh, and if you haven't received one, please reach out if you have any questions. We would also like to take a moment to invite you to the Naomi House Dessert Night uh, held on Friday, April 21st at 6.30 in Winnipeg. Please let us know if you'd like to come and hear more of what's happening at Naomi House this last year. We have some short videos at this dessert night. Uh, about our newest refugee arrivals. Thank you for your prayer and support. Um, and last year, a few of you made some delicious desserts, so if you're willing to donate those as well, please let me know. We are still looking for a few. Um, but today, as part of our Missions Focus Sunday, we've invited safe families from Steinbeck to come and share about what they do. Um, they're fairly new in Steinbeck, about two years. Um, safe Families is Canada-wide, um, and it serves families in need. I'm gonna let Sue share more details, um, but as I was looking at their website, there was one thing um, that I found that um, just kind of touched my heart. It said, safe family volunteers serve without compensation and are motivi motivated by the compassion and grace that they first received with Jesus Christ, or from Jesus Christ. And I just thought, how powerful is that when we can serve out of, um, our love for Jesus. Um, and so in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we, are, we ourselves are comforted by God. Um, it's powerful when we can show Christ's love through our actions. We become an extension of him. So Safe Families is a representation of the grace and love of Christ. Uh, Sue Dirksen is the new director of the Steinbach chapter of Safe Families. Uh, she and her husband, Jed, are raising three sons in Mitchell. I believe their oldest is 17 and their youngest is 11. All right. Um, and up until last fall, she was also serving on the Hanover School Board, um, and she held that position for eight years. So Sue, come on up. I'm going to pray for you, but we're excited to hear what you have to say. Heavenly 
Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. Uh, we thank you, God, just for the mercy and compassion you have shown us. Uh, we thank you for safe families um, who are showing that compassion and grace to, to those in need. Lord, we ask that you would be with Sue right now, Lord. Would you calm her heart? Would you give her the words to speak and help, our, um, help us to be attentive? Um, and Lord, if you are speaking to us, Lord, let us listen. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Okay, good morning. As she said, my name is Sue Dirksen. And I'm excited to be here with you today. I uh, was fighting a cold earlier this week. It has not fully given me my voice back yet. So I'm going to do my best to make it through. Forgive me if I have to stop for some water. Okay, so I'm not sure how many of you have heard about Safe Families or what we do. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. Safe Families was founded in the U.S. in 2002 by Dr. Dave Anderson, a psychologist who worked at a Christian social services agency. He saw the great need for something like this when a desperate mom came in asking for someone to care for her kids, and he had to turn her away because they simply didn't have the supports that she needed. They could only step in when her children had been harmed or neglected. So Dave and his wife personally took in that mom's children until she was back on her feet. And out of that, Safe Families was born to fill in the gap. We officially launched in Canada in 2012 and now have 13 chapters across the country with a 14th launching soon in mainland BC. The Steinbach chapter started November 2020 and has grown very quickly. In our second year alone, we had 69 referrals, served 32 of those families, had five active host families, 48 volunteers, and saw 18 children hosted. Our mission is creating a world where children are safe and families are transformed through radically compassionate communities. We are short-term help with a long-term goal. We surround families in crisis with caring, compassionate community and a support network. If families don't have a network of safe people when a crisis hits, or when mom and dad are in overwhelm, they may be forced to leave their children in less than optimal situations. Parents who are highly stressed can react in frustration and although they may never expect it, can actually lash out at their child. Or they may simply not have it within them to give what the child needs. For many of us in this area, we have family, friends, neighbors, a church group, someone we can count on to help when trouble arises, but not everyone has that. Some don't have family living close by or haven't made close friends. For others, their extended family may not be a safe place to go. What if people from the church could be that for them? So who do we serve? Our families are dealing with a myriad of issues, such as domestic violence, um, challenges parenting a child with exceptional needs, particularly in scenarios of adoption, uh, medical crisis, maybe a parent or child was just diagnosed with cancer and they've been hospitalized and they need someone to care for their children at, while they're there. Um, some are dealing with mental health crisis, some experience, are experiencing a higher risk pregnancy while trying to parent other young children in their home. Some are dealing with the aftermath of COVID still. And others may be experiencing a home emergency such as a flooded house or a fire. and They just need somewhere for their kids to go for a short time. So this year we are also working on launching Safe Families Plus, addressing yet another need in our community. This would help ages, uh, youth, sorry, ages 18 to 25 who are aging out of the foster care system or are otherwise marginalized without the supports that they need. The sad reality is that we have many homeless youth in Steinbach and area. When a youth in the foster care system turns 18, they often find themselves alone trying to navigate life, but not having the tools necessary to do so. We want to come alongside them with mentors and coaches to teach them how to apply for schooling or for a job, how to write a resume, maybe how to budget, um, how to cook, how to change a tire or do an oil change. There's all kinds of things that maybe they haven't been able to learn growing up and they just need someone to walk alongside them. This again is where safe families can fill in the gap and make those connections. With volunteers from local churches, we create communities of extended family-like supports 
a bridge from the community to the church that is built firmly on the calling that Jesus gave us. So what does Jesus call us to do? I know it's no surprise to anyone here that Jesus calls us to hospitality, generosity, and showing compassion. Hebrews 13.2 says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Galatians 6.2, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Safe Families is built on radical hospitality. We want to have open heart, arms, open hearts, and open doors. We welcome strangers into our homes the way Jesus invited us to live with him, being a role model to others in living out the welcoming and love that he modeled. Compassion fueled by mercy. We are moved by mercy to see the need in, sorry, to see the need in those around us and to act to help them. Compassion allows us to see those in need. It means to suffer with and includes a desire to help alleviate that suffering. And disruptive generosity. We strive to give freely of our time, our talents, our treasures, and words. This type of generosity is not as the world defines it. It disrupts our comfortable lives. Jesus didn't live in the comfortable. He moved out into the uncomfortable. Sorry, I'm just going to take a sip of water. <clears throat> Safe Families Canada strives to meet four objectives. Number one, family support and stabilization. Many parents struggle because of limited informal social supports and unavailable extended family. Host families can become the extended family that a parent never had, as does the local church congregation. Number two, child welfare avoidance. Safe families is a preventative measure helping the family before the need for CFS involvement arises, therefore reducing the number of children entering the child welfare system. We are not against child and family services. This is not an us against them mentality, but we actually work together with them in some circumstances and they are a great referral source for us. However, um, the help that they can give is limited and it does come with a cost. A single child in CFS care costs about $45,000 for the year. Comparably with Safe Families, that cost is approximately $1,200. And 97% of the children that we hosted here were reunited successfully with their families. Number three, child abuse prevention. We are providing an overwhelmed and a resource limited parent with a safe temporary place for their child without the threat of losing custody and can help prevent potential abuse or neglect situations. Number four, strengthening compassion ministries of the church. Participation in Safe Families helps volunteers align their spiritual practice more closely with God's commandments. This is embodied in the acts of loving a child, mentoring a parent, or support, supporting the movement with goods and services. We the church can take these biblical principles to come alongside hurting families and help out before the need comes for them to be forcefully separated. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and the family unit is one of his most favorite targets. We as Christians need to be the shield surrounding families. So what does it look like to volunteer with Safe Families? There are many ways to help. Everyone has a variety of different giftings and uh, talents and different amounts of time and abilities as well. Um, we have host families. Parents can voluntarily place their children with an approved volunteer host family who will care for their children um, either as a weekend respite or short-term placement, but up to 90 days is generally the maximum amount of time. This allows the parents to focus on resolving the issues that they're facing or at least take steps towards that goal. We have family coaches. They provide <clears throat> support to both the host family and the family in need, functioning in a role similar to that of a social worker. So they check in with them and see if there's any other supports that are needed, see if everything is going well, if more help needs to be brought in place. Family friends provide mentoring and practical hands-on assistance to the family in need in whatever form is needed. So finding housing, helping with daytime childcare, providing friendship and mentoring, uh, maybe some parent coaching, assessing, accessing treatment, um, maybe helping them write a resume, helping them seek out employment that they're trying to find. 
There's a variety of ways that they can help. Resource friends. Resource friends provide for the physical needs um, or specific services. So it could be meals, furniture, could be diapers, uh, formula, could be transportation, maybe transportation to appointments, um, whatever that is. And they can serve both the host family and the family in need. Financial partners. We rely on financial support, whether monthly or a one-time donation, from generous donors to continue the work that we do. We have many generous donors, and we are very fortunate in the Steinbach area um, to continue to do this work, but we always need to keep going. <laughs> prayer warriors. We also need prayer. As a staff, we personally seek the Lord's guidance for all that we do with Safe Families, and we also need prayer warriors to walk alongside us uh, to pray for our staff, pray for our volunteers, and especially to pray for our families that are in need. So I'm going to share a little story with you. This one's actually from our Winnipeg chapter. There was a single dad with four kids ranging in ages from 18 months to 11 years. Dad had worked the night shift, and at the time, the partner that he had with him there, she stayed home. Unknowingly to him, she was often leaving the house at night and putting the 11-year-old in charge of all of the children. One day, she just left altogether. Dad's employer was kind and switched him to the day shift so that he could be at home at night with his kids, but it was still overwhelming to keep up with their school and daycare schedules. The dad reached out to CFS for help, but since he was not an addict, not abusive, and hadn't neglected his children, he didn't qualify for their supports. Thankfully, the social worker knew about Safe Families and referred him. He did not want to work with Safe Families. He had spent time in Christian foster homes, and unfortunately, his experiences were not good ones. He wanted nothing to do with a Christian group. They asked if there was anything at all that they could help him with, any way that he would concede to receiving some help. And finally, he said, if someone could just watch my kids for two hours every other Saturday so that I can go to Costco without bringing the whole brood, he says, that would be awesome. So the, uh, the chapter lined up a host family for him, and two hours every other Saturday, only four hours a month. They took his children in and he was able to go to Costco and get his shopping done. So a while later, dad ended up losing his job. He decided to take schooling to become an EA and that way be on the same schedule as his children. So at this point, he now trusted Safe Families and he trusted us for respite. Um, at this, the family coach, sorry, lined up a host family to take his children on the weekends, and things went very well. Even after his file was closed, Dad and the host family stayed connected, and he felt supported. One year later, Dad called the chapter director in Winnipeg and said, would you be a reference for me to go to Bible college? He's thinking, wait, <laughs> how did we get from, I want nothing to do with the Christian group, to I'm going to Bible college? How did we get here? He said every experience that he had had right from that very first meeting and every volunteer that he met along the way, they showed him true Christianity. They loved on him. They never once pressured him to go to church or told him, he, oh, even invited him to come to their service. They just showed him love and hospitality and compassion and mercy. There was no judgment, and he just felt loved. At some point, his car broke down and Safe Families, the, the Safe Families Connected Church got him one. And this was another way that somebody reached out to him, a resource friend. And through that, he started attending church and he actually got baptized. So in the end, he did go to Bible college. Um, fast forward to two years later, his basement was flooding. He didn't have the resources himself. He had a bad back and he called Safe Families again. So they contacted his church and asked them to get a crew to help. They got another church involved as well, and they went around, sent volunteers down to dig around his basement and to solve his problem. These are resource friends again. Life is not perfect for the dad, but it is good. We can't come in and fix everyone's problems. We don't have, as Kelly has shared before, we don't have a savior complex. And we can't fix everything for everyone, but what we can do is be a help. We can help them in their time of need, in some of their worst times in their lives. We can be a part of the village that it takes to raise a child, and we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. 
So next, I'm going to show you uh, two videos, actually. The first one is from our Canadian founder and executive director. And then the second is a testimony from a family helped by our London chapter. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Um, it's been a pleasure to, to come and talk to you about this. We're very excited to be here. If you have any further questions, uh, Kelly and I will be at the table in the back afterwards. And you can also go to savefamiliescanada.com. Thank you for having me. Hi, my name is Jen Francis, and I'm the Executive Director of Safe Families Canada. The reason we work through local churches in this ministry is because Safe Families really is a ministry that arises out of the gospel. Because Christ first loved us and had compassion on us, he's called us to do the same for others. And Safe Families is really an incarnational ministry in the way that Christ, who is God, came to earth and walked among sinful humanity. He's asked us to do the same with others, walk with them in the mess of their lives. And it doesn't always look pretty and it's not always clean, but we're to walk there and to love others. And so that's why we do what we do. And we're really focused on building relationships that's the key service, you could call it, that we're providing, uh, and, and that's the gap that we're filling, is a lot of uh, agencies and social services and programs that are out there are very transactional. Uh, it's about give, providing a particular service or a particular material need or whatever. Um, but what we want to focus on is a relationship, building relationship for people who are struggling so that they have someone who walks with them, who cares about them. Who loves them in the midst of that struggle and so we can see meaningful lasting transformation in their lives and we also uh, have a strong philosophy of biblical hospitality if you read scriptures I'm sure you've noticed there's countless scriptures that speak about being hospitable opening your homes in hospitality to those in need and this is not only a commandment of scripture but it's been a long-held practice of the church since the beginning of the church uh, back in the earliest centuries when the church was first thriving and growing is that Christians have always opened their homes to strangers, to people who are in need, who have been, who are poor, who've been uh, refugees, who've been dislocated from their homelands, people who are widowed, who are orphaned. They've taken them in their homes, loved them, and cared for them, uh, as Christ has called us to do. And so that's where the hosting comes into play with what we do in Safe Families. We ask you to open your home and take in a child for a short period of time and love them and love their family. So if you're interested in being involved, uh, to be a host family or a family friend, we have a, a screening pr process and um, training that we provide. And then you can be engaged and you can serve as frequently or infrequently as you like. So you could host multiple times a year for different families or you could host just once. And it fits within your schedule. If you're only available on weekends, if your family only has certain times of the year that you can host, that's fine. Uh, we work with what works for you. Uh, hostings are a voluntary situation, so our host families are voluntary volunteers and the placing parents voluntarily place their kids with us, so we don't take custody of the kids. And they're short term with the goal of the child going back to their parent at the end of the placement. And if your small group is interested in getting involved in being a circle of support, we would encourage you to reach out and one of us will come and speak to you uh, and share how that looks and get all of you engaged in serving a family together. You can also donate to Save Families to support the work uh, as we're growing in your local community. And most importantly, you can pray because we know that uh, this ministry doesn't move forward without the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we seek the Lord in prayer in everything that we do. Um, and we, we trust for him to do the work of transformation and reconciliation in the lives of each of the families that we serve. To find out more information about getting involved, you can visit our website, www.safe families.ca or you can email info at safefamilies.ca and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. out of like s severe desperation because I didn't want to lose eight to the uh, lady that I talked to on the phone she did she know about safe families because the only other option was to put my son in foster home. 
I received a phone call from the Children's Aid Society informing me of a mother who had just had a son three weeks earlier. She was really struggling with being a sexual exploiter. She needed help not only with her son, but just a break while she was able to work on some of the health issues that she was having. We were able to find a host home, a family, friends, and people who were able to rally around her and to love her through this time and to care for her son and to help her back on her feet. You see surprised by the uh, amount of help that they had there. And it wasn't judgmental. It wasn't, this is what they did. It was a very nice and caring group that came to my house. And they understood, um, you know, how much I didn't want to be separated from my, my son. It was just uh, amazing. Like, they came to my door and he was healthy and ready for the baby. And he was very understanding as a father himself. I got hope. about impactful hey um, I know for myself um, a mom with four kids I have often relied on my family and friends to carry us through when we were feeling like we were at the end of our rope 
um, and just, you know, there are people who don't have that. And I think of even in times of crisis in our life when church family has come around us and carried us when, when we couldn't, um, how that really dictates the future. Um, and so I would encourage all of us to take a look and uh, maybe this is something that we can be involved in. I know there's a lot of wisdom and experience um, that, that we can give. Um, so we are going to have a second offering now. This is the, the missions offering. Um, so yeah, I would encourage the ushers to come up. I'm gonna pray and then the worship team can come up. Um, and I'm just gonna be quiet for 30 seconds and I invite everyone to just close their eyes, um, just reflect on what we heard and if maybe um, God is calling you to, to some, some way of service in, the, in this um, organization. So we'll just be quiet now here for a couple Father, we come before you, Lord, with um, quiet hearts, and we're listening. Um, Father, we thank you for safe families, Lord. We thank you um, that they're there to bridge the gap, Lord, um, to help families in crisis or before um, it becomes a crisis, Lord, to keep kids with their families, um, to support parents. Um, God, we ask that you would bless this ministry, Lord. Would you... Um, Bless them financially as they as they um, serve, um, but also with volunteers um, in all of those different capacities, Lord. Um, yeah, would you go before Safe Family Steinbach, and we just pray a blessing, Lord, that when families um, are in contact with Safe Families, Lord, that they would they would sense your love, Lord, that um, that the people serving would be the hands and feet, and just like. Uh, that story she shared of that gentleman who was really closed off to any sort of Christian help, Lord, that um, your love would would transform that. And so, um, yeah, I ask, Lord, now just for this offering, Lord, would you uh, bless the hands um, and bless the people that are willing to give, Lord. We pray that uh, what the, the blessing of this offering where it was go, uh, the blessing would be tenfold. Uh, we thank you, Lord. Just for your faithfulness, Lord, and, and how you care for everyone, Lord. Um, and you're not scared of a little mess. And so, Lord, would you go before us, Lord? Would you open our eyes to the needs around us? In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming and sharing with us. It's encouraging to hear, yeah, just how God's working through that ministry um, and just how the love of God is being shown through that. So thank you for the work that you guys are doing and, um, yeah, I pray that you would be blessed in that ministry. I'll invite you to stand and we're going to close with the love of God.
Chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs> 